It's 10,000 years. It's great. Have you seen it? Oh, it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Welcome to the Movie Club. I'm your host, John Ridley. Every week, our panel of celebrated cinephiles hip you to what's happening at the local multiplexes, as well as giving you the lowdown on the latest DVD releases. Last week, they completely dissed what went on to be the number one movie in America, Hide and Seek, proving that they're uniquely out of touch with both red and blue states. Mm -hmm. This week, they look to see if they can make it two for two. Can they get it wrong again? <laughs> as they look at yes. love and death and dance in these films, it's Hitch, Definitely. starring Will Smith as a male matchmaker and TV's yeah. Kevin James as his hopeless client in this romantic a comedy. Imaginary Hero, starring Sigourney Weaver, Jeff Daniels, and Emil Hirsch, in a story of a family trying to cope with tragedy and loss. And it's Bride and Prejudice. It's Bollywood meets Jane Austen, or East meets West in this broad cross-cultural musical comedy from the director of Bend It Like Beckham. Plus, we've got DVD reviews of the Oscar-nominated picture Ray and Pauly Shore's new movie, Pauly Shore is Dead. Gosh, I just, I love <laughs> saying that. Does anybody else besides me <laughs> love that? Joining us to review these films are our movie club regulars. It's Zoriana Kitt, the entertainment news reporter for KTLA right here in Los Angeles. And she gave me hand sanitizer. <laughs> Nathan Rabin, he's the head entertainment writer for the Onion AV Club. Joining us all the way from Chicago. Anderson Jones, who reviews movies for CNN Headline News, getting his usual kiss. She gave and me a cold. <laughs> <laughs> joining us also is Dr. Josh Kuhn. He is a reviewer for the San Francisco Bay Guardian. Zoriana. Uh, it's a pleasure. You're up first. You saw uh, this new film, Hitch, Hitch, starring Will Smith. This is directed by Andy Tennant, mm. who actually has a distinction of directing an episode of the shortest-lived TV show in the history of television, South of Sunset, canceled after only one airing, but also went on to do some other mm. movies. He did... Uh, uh, the Olsen Twins, It Takes Two. It Takes Two. Remember he did that, that but he also had Sweet Home Alabama, which did very, very well. So this guy does have some chops. Now he's back with a big romantic comedy starring Will Smith. How was it? Um, actually, it was not too shabby, yeah. depending on if you look at plot one one or plot two. <laughs> the film stars Will Smith as Christopher Hitchens, hence Hitch, who's a professional matchmaker who helps men woo the women of their dreams. Mm. So the plot splits two ways here. The first one has Hitch spending time with a client named Albert, played by television star Kevin James, where he teaches Albert the do's and don'ts on landing hot celebrity Allegra Cole, played by Amber Valletta. Take a look. The reason I'm calling is uh, about our appointment this Wednesday. I'm not going to be able to make it. Oh. Uh, well, when can you make it? I don't even know, because my whole next week is slammed. Right, but it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Uh-huh. No, we're going to make it happen, though, that's for sure. We're going to make it happen. Yes. All right, the second plot line has Hitch doing his own wooing when he falls for a hard-to-get gossip columnist Sarah, played by Eva Mendez. I mean, you're sending all the right signals. No earrings, heels under two inches, your hair is pulled back, you're wearing reading glasses with no book, drinking a great goose martini, which means you had a hell of a week and a beer just wouldn't do it. Who's gonna believe that there's a man out there that could sit down beside a woman he doesn't know and genuinely be interested in who she is, what she does, without his own agenda? Yeah, I wouldn't even know what that would look like. So what would a guy like that say? Well, he'd say, my name is Alex Hitchens and I'm a consultant. But she wouldn't be interested in that because she'd probably be just counting the seconds until he left. Thinking he was like every other guy. Which life experience has taught her is a virtual certainty. But then he'd ask her name and what she did for a living. And she might blow him off. Or she might say... I'm Sarah Milas. You know, I say scrap the lame love story between Hitch and Sarah. The filmmaker should have just kept it a buddy comedy between Will Smith and Kevin James. The chemistry between these two is amazing. I haven't seen two comedic actors feed off each other like this on the big screen in a long time. I mean, Kevin literally steals the move and I think could really become a big screen star. And the complete opposite can be said about Eva Mendes. She has no sense of comic timing here. Amber Valletta, a supermodel who's had little bit parts here and there, does <laughs> Way better here. Actually, it's surprisingly good. Kind of reminds me of an early Cameron Diaz. Yeah, we're hearing some grunts from the other side of the room. What? Yeah. What's the well, problem I, I, here? I'm not disagree with you more. I, okay. I can't believe you're saying, you know, that Kevin James and Amber Valletta, who, you know, is, is, is a mannequin uh, in this movie, have, have more magnetism than Eva Mendes, who Eva. I thought was unbelievably hot. She made okay, me feel funny. Oh, I'm like when sorry, I used to climb I didn't the rope watch in gym this class. movie with hand cream and a tube sock. <laughs> wow, I mean, what oh, a line. Oh. Did you write that? Oh, that is a good 
Wait, wait, wait. wait. That's now, wait a second. How do you know how I watch this movie? Now, wait a second. People okay. trailing me? All right, let's talk about it. You know, as a buddy, buddy comedy, this week, <laughs> I just talk about romantic comedy. You know, part of my problem with romantic comedies, at least modern ones, is that they, you know where they're going. I love when Woody Allen does it because you don't know where it's going to end, or at least earlier Woody Allen. Well, is the problem yeah, yeah. just with, with doing a romantic right. comedy? But that's, but that's why I think you go to romantic comedies. I mean, you, you, there are things that you expect in a romantic comedy. It's a date movie. Right. There are things that you want that you want out of it. What I think is interesting about this movie is that Will Smith is kind of in the straight man role. Yeah. He's not really going for the jokes. Kevin James does it, who I think does it really, really well. well as you said, yeah. I, think, I think it's last true. Week we, yeah. you know, I think last week we were talking about this whole idea of the everyman, and yeah. we were kind of debating mm -hmm. about whether or not black actors can be everyman. And this sure. movie really pushes Will Smith one step see, closer. I think, I, I see, I don't see that at all. I see yeah. him as, as kind of this ideal. It's I kind of the Cary Grant role, where he just I sort of oozes uh, sort of, sort of uh, so appeal perfect. and charm. Yeah. But I, well, I think the movie pushes Will Smith to the side, and it's Kevin James who really shines I don't think here. so at all. He's, you know, he's listen, a TV star. I'm hey, a big hey screen, Will I'm Smith a TV used to be a uh, he TV was, star, but he too. He is able to do make a leap because he has that kind of magnetism. Well, do me a favor. Do this. So let's just bottom line this movie. Give me a four-star rating. Well, four, it, being it, the best, of in course. In spite of my better instincts, uh, this movie <laughs> seduced and then abandoned uh, and then turned me out like a $2 prostitute. And then you threw, <laughs> away, <laughs> your, and then you threw away your tube sock. <laughs> I did indeed. Unbelievable. You like this movie. I never would have expected it from you. How about you, Josh? Liked it? Yes? No? Though it's hard to do. It was better <laughs> than iRobot, which is shocking. I give it two stars. That's the hyperbole of the week. That's going to be in the ad in well, the LA Times. Zoria. <laughs> well, Will Smith and Kevin James each get a star, so two. And and nothing for Ava <laughs> Mendez? No stars? <laughs> nothing? Sorry, girl. Uh, Anderson. <laughs> Josh, anything's better than iRobot. <laughs> <laughs> that was my joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he, here's the thing. Uh, I think that uh, The Fresh Prince is getting a little bit stale, oh, and uh, I'm going to give it I'm going to give it two stars. Two stars. All right. Well, okay. For the movie club, for you guys, it sounds like pretty much a two-star average for Hitch. Now, Nathan, you're up next. You reviewed a new movie. This is called Imaginary Heroes. This was written and directed by a young guy named Dan Harris. He was a co-writer on X-Men 2. He's writing the new Superman movie, also Logan's Run. I mean, he's got a hot streak as a writer, first time behind the camera. How does he do? Uh, he, he does a good job. All right. uh, yeah, his, his parents should be proud. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the CD underbelly of suburban life gets exposed yet again in Imaginary Heroes. Uh, this is an endearingly twisted comedy drama. It begins with the suicide of a uh, championship swimmer, uh, and then gets a whole lot darker after that. Now, each member of the boy's family sort of copes with his death in their own kind of uniquely dysfunctional way. Uh, Dad, Jeff Daniels, for example, uh, spends a lot of time staring mopily into space. Uh, <laughs> uh, brother, uh, Emil Hirsch, uh, gets into all sorts of troubles. He's quite the rapscallion. And Mom, Zagorny Weaver, uh, kind of becomes a late-blooming stoner, at least. She tries to be. Check it out. Hi, I was, um... I'm looking for the good stuff. The good stuff? Yeah. You know. The, uh, real stuff. Oh. The real stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> marijuana. <laughs> you want to buy marijuana? Hey, I grew up in the 60s. I can handle it. I'm no snitch. Ah, uh, if only it were that easy. Here, Hirsch and sister Michelle Williams, who's away for uh, college for most of the film, lucky girl, uh, engage in a little stoned philosophizing. Is there such a thing as a human heart? Though that is the better question. Well, if you listen closely, you can hear him breaking. <laughs> <laughs> You know, movies like this, a kind of combined sort of dark comedy and sort of psychological drama, they always get compared to American Beauty. Yeah. I think this is a lot less sort of crowd-pleasing. You know, it has a lot of funny, uh, dark moments, but it also kind of takes loss and grief seriously. You know, it doesn't really sugarcoat or provide any, you know, easy answers. Uh, it's all over the place tonally, but I think that's one of the reasons why it rings so true to life. Yeah. You know, I think ultimately it's just as kind of messy and jagged and weird and unpredictable as life itself. Mm -hmm. And I liked it. I liked it a whole lot. Yeah, you know, you bring up American Beauty. That was a DreamWorks film, and they're you know, a major studio. This is Sony Pictures' classic independent uh, studio. Great thing about it, you can go into some dark material, but also in terms of the actors, you get to see Sigourney Weaver, Jeff Daniels, 
good actors who don't normally. Uh, well, in terms of studio <laughs> speak, they're a little past their prime. Right. So thank goodness for independent films like this because we really get a chance to see them shine, and it reminds us what brilliant actors she, they really well, are. She's fantastic yeah. in this yeah. film. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. you love to have her as your mother? By the way, yeah. I mean, I, I totally want would. her on my team. You know, going to bat for me. But I have a question: sure. What did swimmers do to Hollywood? I feel like every movie that we see lately. <laughs> <laughs> like, and why do I always review all the swimmers? Like, I know I won the bronze in the backstroke in '96, but I totally don't want to get pigeonholed as a guy who only reviews swimmers. I do want to do the flip side of of Jeff and Sigourney. Emil Hirsch, we have to talk about him. You know, he's yeah. a Down real oh gem. I mean, he's he's been a child star in a bunch of Hollywood films like and Emperor's Club, but now he gets he's to step really up again because he's an independent up film. Yeah, and the other good thing, you know, reminds listen. me of kind of like a, like a uh, scrunch down uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Kind of has that sullen yeah, magnetism. Isn't Leonardo DiCaprio a scrunch down Leonardo <laughs> yeah. DiCaprio? Well, no, he's Anderson, like uh, bottom line this for me. Give me your star rating. I think this is an auspicious debut for uh, for a solo guy, for solo work for, for Dan Harris, and, you know, I'm just jealous. He's a friend of mine, uh, and I give it three stars. Three stars, great, Zoriana. Um, I think three stars too. I'm going to agree with Anderson. It's a, a it's pretty, pretty impressive character study on these broken uh, and dysfunctional people. Very good, thank you, uh, Josh. I thought it was just like wonderfully dark and twisted, kind of like ordinary people. As long as you add pot, ecstasy, and a little boy on boy kissing, so all the good go stuff in life, stars. right? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was very flawed, uh, but very compelling. Uh, though I thought having Scorny Weaver fight aliens in the last scene, eh, kind of a cheap ploy for box office. you got to do three something stars. to get the numbers up, right? All right, so that's about a three-star average for Imaginary Heroes from the movie club. Coming up, it's Bollywood meets Grease with the musical extravaganza Bride and Prejudice. We haven't seen anything like this since, I don't know, 10,000 years. No. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to. I'm not even going to talk about 10,000 years. I'm not saying anything <laughs> about my play. Hey, welcome back to the Movie Club. I'm John Ridley, your host. Anderson, if I ask you which nation on the planet produces the most movies every year, what would you say? I'm going to go with uh, India for 600, John. India <laughs> is correct. You're a new champion. And uh, we've got a new movie from India and also right. from the director, uh, Gurinder Shana, who directed Bindit Like Beckham. Right. She is back with Bride and Prejudice. Right, and uh, Bollywood comes to Hollywood, yeah. which they've been predicting for some time. First, John, I have to give you a disclaimer. Okay. I mean, obviously, when you go into a musical, you have to suspend some disbelief. When people are walking down the street and they yeah. break into song and dance, you know you're sort of in a fantasy world. Or West Hollywood. Uh, true. <laughs> but when drag queens in wigs and saris, and I happen to own one, by the way, start singing and dancing like they do in Bride and Prejudice, yes. well, we're not in Chicago anymore. Uh, no, that's Bollywood. Folks. Yes. Uh, Bride and Prejudice stars... Ajwari Ray. Thank you. I couldn't do it. And The Rings, <laughs> Martin Henderson. And it gets inspiration from the Jane Austen, I Need a Husband Right Now novel, Pride and Prejudice. In the hands of director Gurinder Shada, it's Grease meets, uh, well, something. Uh, you're going to have to tell me. Um, Grease, too. Here's how Bollywood does Summer Nights. Okay. <laughs> The girls see the boys, and the boys see the girls. About to transform into the Indian MC Hammer. Kuriya, kuriya. These girls are like naked live wires. If you get too close, you'll get an electric shock of love. In this next thing, you'll understand why Lalita, played by... Ajwarya Ray. Thank you. Runs into the arms of the richy rich American and away from the scary Indian stereotype guy. You know, the Indian community there is very professional. All doctors and computers and <laughs> not like these uneducated minicab 7 Eleven store types. It's ours for the taking. Anyone can become an American. Then why come back here? There's only one problem with America. Our girls that are born there, they've totally lost their roots. Completely clueless. They're all too outspoken and career oriented. And some have even turned into the lesbian. <laughs> <clears throat> so that leaves me no choice. I may be healthy, wealthy, and wise, but as they say, no life without wife. <laughs> No 
Life, no wife. That's that's my motto too. So <laughs> Apparently, they don't have PC in India. Um, look, it's no surprise to tell you guys that I love musicals. Shut and your mouth. I, <laughs> and I love that movie musicals are having a resurgence. Dreamgirls, you can't get her fast. Uh, but the gospel choir on Venice Beach was even too much for me. Um, I caught Bend It Like Beckham at Sundance uh, in between collecting gobs of free stuff. I had a little free time in my schedule, <laughs> yes. and uh, it was in fact a revelation. Bride and Prejudice, mm, not so much. Uh, I think the mark of a good musical from Oklahoma to West Side Story is when you leave the theater like humming memorable tunes that kind of stick in your head for days. But there were no memories, memories uh, uh, <laughs> really? for me at all after this. Uh, and this one, I mean, you know, this film is really big in England. It's been out for a while. It's new here in the states, but it's big in England. It's been big in India. Are we just kind of way behind on the Bollywood curve, or is this one not quite up the snuff? It's definitely not up to snuff. Yeah. I mean, this feels like a really dumbed-down, tacky, uh, garish uh, version of something not terribly uh, cerebral to begin with. You know, I hated this film, but I think that might just be because I have a bias against films that are total crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But neither Bollywood films are supposed to be garish. I mean, they kind of celebrate garishness. I mean, that's the whole point of them. And these, you know, over-the-top musical numbers, um, you can't really show sex scenes or kissing, so it all gets, you know, put into the musical numbers. And this film has some incredible musical and, numbers, like you know, Bhangra stuff. Film. Punjabi that wasn't the great problem. Stuff. I think the two leads, Ashwarya and Martin Henderson, had no chemistry. That you could not, you didn't want them to be together. You didn't root for them. Yeah, what cemetery like exactly. did they dig this but Martin Henderson guy about? Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's I, ask I, one I, other question because you brought up an interesting point about being sort of stereotypical. Sure, sure. Now, uh, you know, Binda like Beckham, a really interesting story of a right. young Sikh girl trying right. to, you know, do something with herself. Right. Is this <laughs> film? Is this just kind of? Is this a bad stereotype? No, no, and no, playing you know, on totally. the stereotypes yeah. as well. What, what I think is, is, what, and what, what I think Nathan is sort of highlighting is sort of this like lack of cultural understanding of other yeah. places. You know, when you're making as many movies as they make in Bollywood, it's about entertainment and frivolity and going. I mean, have you been to India? I mean, right. these people need a break, well, and uh, listen, that's what and that's what Bollywood movies represent. This is a movie I think we need to talk a little bit more on the website sure. about because I think there's some interesting discussions to get into that. So right now, let's just bottom line this one, get the star rating. Nathan, we're starting with you. Yeah, well, who knew that when you cross Jane Austen in Bollywood, you come up with, like, a, a really bad sitcom with, like, the worst music this side of Greece, too. Uh, one star, and that's being generous. Yeah. Okay. Totally and multicultural as well. <laughs> totally disagree. <laughs> but, um, I think, for me, if you, you just kind of have to bracket the really conservative marriage plot. And other than that, it's a lot, a lot of fun. I give it two and a half stars. Two and a half stars. Couldn't Oriana. disagree with you more. One wow. star Simply for you the lack girl. of chemistry. <laughs> like yeah. Agree, disagree, agree, disagree. And <laughs> Anderson, you get to be a tiebreaker. Here. Like Josh, I was dancing in the aisles. And by the way, <laughs> it had nothing to do with the movie, and though, by right? The, the guy in the the guy in the first scene who we saw is actually. And that was during Hotel Wanda. Yeah. yeah. And how many stars? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half stars. All right. Well, this one, this is definitely a mix-up. I, I can't wait to talk about this on the website. <laughs> but basically, this is about a two-star rating for the movie club for *Bride and Prejudice*. All right. Now, listen. Stick around. Coming up next, we've got comedian Regan Burns is joining us, and he's got his DVD review of *Pauly Shore is Dead*. I'll never get tired of saying that. And also, we got a DVD review of the Oscar-nominated film *Ray*. So join us. Don't and, go too far and away. We're about two thousand years. Oh, ago. that play is so <laughs> powerful. <laughs> Welcome back to the Movie Club. I'm your host, John Ridley, and we are here with comedian Regan Burns. He's got a new DVD that he's reviewing this week. Yeah, Pauly yeah. Shore is Dead. I'm sorry you have to do this review because I never get tired of actually saying the title. <laughs> please tell us about it, Regan. John, first off, can you please have Anderson stop undressing me with his eyes? I can't stop it, Regan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, what if I told you I had a movie that starred Sean Penn, wow. Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn, Tom Sizemore, Charlie Sheen, Michael Madsen, Ellen DeGeneres, Rico Suave, and Mini-Me. Would you want to see it? I yeah, would, Rico yes, I want to see it. <laughs> well, no. what if I told you it was written, produced, and directed by, and starred, Polly Shore. Mm -hmm. I gotta go. I'll see you next week, everybody. Yeah, yeah. okie dokie. Well, with the creation of Polly Shore is Dead, Mr. Shore, a.k.a. The Whistle Buddy, <laughs> has done the impossible. <laughs> He's made fun of all his horrible movies from the 80s and 90s by making a what? Horrible Another horrible movie. movie. Yeah. See, the story centers on the rise and fall of comedian Polly Shore, who has found himself in tough times after a failed Fox sitcom. He's lost everything and the phone has stopped ringing. And now here, for the very first time, caught on film, okay, really cheap quality videotape, <laughs> two of the most powerful performers of our generation share the big screen for the first time in motion picture history. I dare you to try to look away. 
Okay. What are you still doing here? I, I was just getting ready to leave. Well, not you clean the sh up. How are you? Tre Trevorina? Oh, hi, Polly. When are we adding the two new floors to the house? You're adding two new floors? Yeah, two whole new floors. I got a lot of trunks. Hey, listen, sorry about the sitcom, okay? I just got myself one. 22 on the air. Congratulations. Yeah, 22. Anyway, listen, actually, Mitch is the one to congratulate. He's my, my new manager, and uh, he's the one that got me the part. Listen, why don't you run along to Mommy's Club, okay? All right, guys, let's go. It's Carrot Top! It kind of reminds you of the power that De Niro and Pacino had facing off in heat, doesn't it? No. Now, I admire yeah. Pauly's attempt at the self-deprecating humor and for being thick-skinned enough to poke a little fun at his career. But after 80 minutes of the same shtick, Pauly, we get the joke. Biodome sucked. <laughs> hey, don't get me wrong, Pauly. When they have an open call for jury duty, too, I'm right there ready to do my best gopher impersonation. <laughs> but till then, leave the writing and producing to Mr. Ridley. Oh, God. Is that enough oh. of a suck up, John? Oh, it was beautiful. Not since you were in my trailer earlier. <laughs> uh, like I'm going to go, I'm gonna go oh, take oh, a bath on that. <laughs> oh, thank you, Standard Regan. That was absolutely fantastic. So All right, we got another <laughs> DVD <laughs> review. Hopefully, a little bit better one. This one is. Uh, Ray. Yes, a film no one's heard of. <laughs> no one, yes, it's another point. film that no one's heard yeah, of. Yeah, it's now out on DVD very quickly. And what's really interesting, I think, is since it's come out in late October, yeah. is that Ray has really gone from being Taylor Hackford's biopic about R&B singer Ray Charles to being the Jamie Foxx film about that singer. You <laughs> right. know? And, and you really get that in the DVD even more so because you really can really refocus and realize on the fa on how much this film is about it's Jamie Foxx. Fox. I mean, it's not the film for me isn't so much there. So it's solid, meticulous, but a uh, little stock. And this is all about Jamie Fox. The DVD, though, does come uh, with a lot of extra features, which people who saw the original theater <laughs> version are, are going to probably really like. But I don't think you need all this extra stuff at the time. You get 14 extra scenes. Uh, you know, the film's already two and a half hours. Uh, but, but you do get um, the first time ever that Ray Charles and Jamie Foxx meet and play piano together. And it's incredibly interesting to watch them interact, though it does really pull the curtain back on the one trick that gives the film its power. And so it, you know, it makes you remember the real Ray Charles yeah. uh, when the power of Ray that you're focusing on you know, how much Jamie Foxx becomes Ray Charles, and it takes you out of it a little bit. That said, I think if you loved it in the theaters, you're going to love it even more on DVD. When you watch it at home, and you got that 14 extra scenes. You know? Wow. Okay, so let's recap the major movies that we reviewed this week on the Movie Club. Our Movie Club members thought that Hitch was a double, but definitely no home run, and gave it two stars. The club thought that Imaginary Heroes was an absorbing portrait of a dysfunctional family, and gave it three stars. They were split on Bride and Prejudice, as Nathan and Zoriana didn't feel that the chemistry worked, but That's Anderson and Josh enjoyed the Bollywood craziness, <laughs> gave it a movie club average of two stars. And that's our show for this week. Join us again next week when we will in devote the entire program, a whole 22 minutes. We'll look at the actors, filmmakers, and movies that Oscar, that rascal, forgot, <laughs> overlooked, or just plain ignored, like Zoriana. Hey, for more Movie Club info, please log on our website <laughs> at amctv.com. That's it for this week. We'll catch you at the multiplex. When I say ignore it, I don't mean in a bad way. People should pay more attention to you. They should throw cameras on you all the time. I know.